Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, B1B Flyer here. In this video, I'm going to unbox and review the new Clan Heavy Striker Star and Clan Command Star boxes. Full disclosure, I purchased these on my own. They were not given to me to review, so any opinions and conclusions are on my own and they're not based on the fact that I was given a product at all. Here's the Clan Heavy Striker Star box. Got a clear window to see the miniatures inside. If you're buying this at retail, you should be able to see it on the shelf. If you're buying it online, this is what it'll look like when you receive it. On the back, it lists the contents. You get the pilot cards as well as the Alpha Strike cards for each of the mechs. And if you want to get record sheets, you can get them at the website listed here. Here's what those cards all look like. And now we'll move on to the miniatures. First up is the Fenris or Ice Ferret. As you can see here, compared to the original metal sculpt, it's shorter, but definitely more stocky and has more of an essence of weight and it clearly is in a running pose, so it's more dynamic than the static original TRO drawing that the art was based off of. For the miniature itself, I really like this sculpt. It's got a lot of detail, given that the previous sculpts were lacking in a lot of that due to just being flat panels in a lot of areas. I feel the, the best parts are the backside of the miniature where there's a lot more panel and recessed areas, just a little little details that make it much more interesting to look at than it was before. I like that they got rid of that little cod piece thing. It's all just fixed now and doesn't look weird. And I think the weapons are properly proportioned. There's not too many mold lines or panel lines that would really affect this if you didn't clean them up too much. So it's a pretty pretty clean sculpt overall. I'm really happy with this one. Next up is the Dragonfly or Viper. You can see it's fairly comparable to, this is the new sculpt metal version. So it definitely was larger, but again, you're stuck with a static pose on that, uh, the way the feet are aligned. So giving this some more dynamic movement really helps make the sculpt look a lot better and the nice thing is is and they did this improvement as well with the second metal sculpt that they didn't do on the first is that there's actual weapons representing what should be there you get the anti-missile system and uh, the arm uh, weapons so the miniature itself the the one complaint i have that stands out right away is the size of the srm4 on the left arm the missile holes are not scaled proportionately with what the srms are on the rest of these miniatures and you'll see that later when i review a couple other mechs so just keep that in mind that you may want to maybe drill those out a little bit, but um, that's just one thing that I, I didn't like. The other thing I don't like about this sculpt is that it's got that foot post in there, which if you watch the original box set unboxing, the Mad Cat has the same thing, and it's just not something that I'm a huge fan of. There are other sculpts that have a little toe tab that kind of sticks into the feet and then goes into the base, and I think that's a much better option, but it is what it is. The nice thing about this is the weapons on the arm are a separate piece so you can cut that off and you can do your omnis same thing with the missile launcher so if you want to swap that out with something a little bit better you're free to do so and then i've seen a lot of folks cutting off the ams and putting it on other miniatures so there's a lot of options for the mech itself and then for the mold lines there's a few on the side of the torso here the tops of the arms and the centers it's fairly common the ugliness is a little bit here on the front of the shins overall though there's not too many that would really make the sculpt look uh, bad if you just maybe omitted them. You know, of course, everyone usually tries to clean them up, but if you didn't, it's not the end of the world on this sculpt either. It's not going to show as much. All right, up next, we've got the Vulture or Mad Dog. Now, this is next to the new metal sculpt as well, and I did modify this one to be a running pose so that old dynamic running thing doesn't really apply here because that's a lot of work. But the walking stance that the Mad Dog has is great. Um, it does do the kind of the split between the hexes thing where the feet don't quite make it clear as to what side it is, but if you mark the front of your hex faces or if you want to reposition it on the hex face, you can do that. The size difference obviously is that it's just, it just looks like he's been on weight gain 4,000 here. He's been, you know, hitting the gym and he's got a lot of mass built up. I, I appreciate it in the legs. I think the torso is maybe just a little bit too too large but again i mean for for what it is i'm not going to complain about the the new sculpts overall being you know much more detailed much better looking i, I actually am a, i'm a fan of all the, the redesigns if, I, if i'm being honest the mech itself the the worst of it for the uh, areas where the plastic was clipped is the front of the upper legs there's just a lot of a lot of leftover there 
Um, it'll take a little bit of cleanup. Thankfully, it's on the underside, so it's not going to be noticeable too much in most light conditions unless you're really looking for it. On mine, I know a lot of folks were having the issue of the torso is canted kind of in an upward motion, and that can be fixed with a little bit of hot water. Or if you're going to repose the legs, you can just cut the hips and have at it with whatever you want. The arm barrels on mine are a little bit warped outwards. I haven't put this one in hot water yet to see if they fix on their own. They should, as long as the, the mold itself didn't have this feature <laughs> feature uh, on there. But the overall sculpt itself, I mean, this is this is minor. Uh, you, could, you, you could probably just use a hair dryer if you really didn't want to dip it in water, but I'm just going to mess around with them as I get the opportunity to, to, to make sure I can fix what I want to fix. But again, I, I really do enjoy the, the new sculpts. I love the, the detail they've added in in a lot of areas. It really does benefit a lot of the miniatures. I mean, just the, the detail alone here, this callback to the Mech Warrior mercenaries and, you know, all the, I mean, just, the, you know, even though there's not a turret there, it's just great to see a little bit of, of a homage, I guess, if you will, to that. The missile tubes are a little bit bigger than what I would want for LRMs, but the nice thing is, is if you're making one of the variants, they would double as SRM tubes, since they're much larger diameter. But that's just, and again, I'm nitpicking here. This is not something that is gonna prevent me from ever buying the sculpt. So I'm just making my observations. Up next is the Loki or Hellbringer. And you can see here as it's compared to the old school, original small sculpt that it's definitely gained some size, which again, that's fairly consistent throughout. The, the mediums and up are a little bit larger or a lot larger. And then the, the lights got smaller, but more, I think, appropriately scaled. And this is the true with this as well. It's got a much larger, you know, looking like it's a heavy class mech compared to a lot of the other mediums. The legs definitely have a lot more detail. If you have one of the resculpts where they've got just tall legs and almost to me, never, I never really liked the way the torso proportion with it. This fixes a lot of that. Uh, it's more fix all of it really. And you can just see there's just outstanding detail on the legs, the back of the torso. The weapons pods on the arms are just ripe for you know swapping stuff out and putting whatever weapons you want in. You can swap out the arms with the Timberwolf and several of the other miniatures to get your desired weapons load. I've seen guys cut off the, the SRM pack as well as the anti-missile system and use those as well. So really you've got a lot of great options. For the cleanup on the sculpt itself, there, there wasn't a whole lot. The Most of the hard edges have where the flash would be. So you're not really gonna be seeing too much. There's a little bit on some of the undersides of the guns, maybe a little glue cleanup on the attached bits on the top here, depending on who put your miniature together. There's a little bit on the inside of the legs here as well. So. But overall, the, this is a, a, a really nice improvement to the original and the second Sculpt Hellbringers. All right, the last of the pack is the Man of War or Gargoyle. And this is probably my favorite update out of all the miniatures in this pack. It just really fixes a lot of things. Now, the, the leg stance is a little wide for some people maybe, but it's supposed to be an assault mech. And if you look at the, that's the original sculpt in metal, just standing there like a statue, the reproportioned head, the reproportioned torso, everything has been redesigned to make it look more, in my opinion, realistic. Again, the, the minor complaint might be that the legs are a little too widely spaced, but that, I mean, is such a small complaint. So what you're getting is a wider, broader, more defined miniature. And I'm not gonna say I don't like that in any case. Now this is not without its faults. The problem that you'll notice first is that the SRMs on the arms, a couple of those holes somehow did not make it through the initial process of making sure they were the same depth as the other ones. So you get these shallow missile tubes here now. You can fix it with a drill bit, but it's unfortunate that it's consistent. Every single one of these that I have has that same flaw. So I'm, I'm guessing it's part of the actual production, not, not my individual miniature. The second thing that stands out uh, is this left arm is like a slip cast. Uh, and I've seen it again over and over again, even on other folks' miniatures. You've got one height deviation throughout the center, which is going to mean you got to either trim it away with a hobby knife or the back of a hobby blade or do some sanding or, or whatever to, to take that down a little bit. And you can see it. You can see where it, it definitely just shows a little bit. It's off. So that's unfortunate. Thankfully though, it's in a it's in a high area that isn't obstructed by a lot of stuff, so it should be easy to clean up. It's just, you know, it's unfortunate that's one thing, but those are the two glaring things that stand out about this sculpt that I'm I'm not happy about, but 
uh, I think the, the benefits and the improvements are certainly outweighing the, the negatives there. So uh, there are some cleanup here and there, but again, this is the overall, that's the, those are the major ones you'll have to deal with. I'm not a huge fan of these little like piston looking things sticking out of the back of the, the arms there. That's just a personal preference. I mean, it's it's not really something you see on Battletech miniatures very often, but uh, it's just fun, interesting to me to see that they ended up here and it's just one more thing to clean up. And of course it creates a tight groove on the back of the arm, which you know, I'm thinking about what am I gonna do hobby-wise with this miniature and I'm just, I don't see the, the gain of that. But uh, again, I'm, I'm nitpicking on, on little things here. It's, it's great to see that there's, you know, just fine vents and canopies and reproportioned head uh, which does have a little bit of, of a you know sprue re release here but again easy to get to and clean up so overall you know if you're hitting this with a little bit of a scrape and a sand and a brush or whatever then you're going to be happy with how it looks at the end of the day here's the battletech clan command star box you can see it's got a display of the five miniatures clear view and on the back, it talks about the contents, the five miniatures, and you get five pilot cards and five Alpha Strike cards. You also can download the record sheets at the BG Battletech Downloads site. Inside the box, here's the cards that you get. And now we'll move on to the miniatures. For the first mech in this box, it's the Koshi or Mist Lynx. And as you can see here, compared to the first original metal sculpt, it's miles apart. It is shorter but it reflects that it's a light mech and the dynamic pose means it's gonna be settled a little bit lower because it's mid stride. The biggest things you're gonna notice is that the, there's actual weapons on the arms versus just the, the blank boxy, I don't know what they were thinking when they did that. Uh, I guess it's based off of the artwork. So you get a lot more defined weapons and of course you're gonna get a lot more detail because the technology and the ability to reproduce detail in these sculpts is you know 30 years in the making. For the miniature itself, this is the SRM4 that I think should be on the Viper, but that's unfortunate that it didn't carry over in consistency, but at the same time, that was what I was mentioning prior. Here's that toe attachment that I was talking about that I wish you had on any of the miniatures that have a post underneath their foot. This is what I think they should have done because you can put a little filler around it, even if you're, you're new to modeling, even a little bit of grass or something will, will cover that up much more easily than that larger cylinder. So I feel like this would have been a better option if at all possible to use more. But that being said, the sculpt itself does have a little bit of flash on the, on the front of the hands and the missile launcher here. You get a little bit along the front of the torso. The, the rear armor uh, skirts, I guess, there's a little bit of edge flash because it, it comes to a thin point. Don't think that's gonna be a huge deal if you use a brass bristle brush, just the back of a hobby knife. I haven't cleaned any of these up yet, so I can't say one way or the other what's the best way. You do get a lot more uh, defined detail. You get you know, vents, you get a little bit more of a, I guess, a aggressive slope to the front of the mech. And again, you get all the jump jet ports and all the, just the little vents and heat sink areas and just, you know, things that you would want to see on a you know, giant walking tank. The flash on the bottom of the barrels here is a little is a little bit frustrating, but it's again anything that's on the underside overall is most likely going to be completely unnoticed or omitted, especially if you're you know playing with them on the table or even in photographs. It's fairly easy to to conceal some of that. So just keep that in mind that when I call out this flash and stuff, it's not that I'm saying this model is terrible. It's just actually in most cases if it's on the underside, I actually prefer that just to you know if it's a lot of cleanup or it's a lot of work, then it's a lot easier to hide. Uh, that being said, I, I really like the running pose, this sculpt, the positioning, everything on this this new Miss Lynx really is uh, is a win for me. Next up, we have the Shadow Cat, and you can see that it grew a little bit from the older metal sculpt, but in a good way. the The reason it's taller mostly is that the hip is not a flat plate. The old metal sculpt had basically a flat plate. You put the torso on top of it, and then because of the way the upper legs were shaped, you were locked into that position because they basically joined right up against each other. So it wasn't a very realistic representation. So uh, I don't mind it being a little taller. Overall, you get a wider stance of the feet and you get uh, basically the same appearance of the weapons and the arms, maybe a little shorter, which I don't think is a bad thing. I thought the really long lower arm on the original sculpt was kind of goofy. Um, for the sculpt itself, the miniature is fairly clean as far as seams and lines. There's a little bit on the sides here and you know they'll require some some cleanup. The gun barrel is easy to get to so there's nothing really to complain about there. There's a little bit of, I don't know if this is glue or not on my, looks like it might be glue on mine, but 
you know, the, the fact is that this sculpt is not really tightly packed together, so any of this cleanup that you have to do, for the most part, it's fairly easy to get to if you want to do that. Like I said, I like the shorter left arm. And then just a, a nitpick is I always felt like the Shadow Cat maybe had a little bit more of an aggressive angle to it, and it's probably just because I've been staring at a metal one for the last however many years. Uh, I just think that maybe it could have translated a little bit more to these intakes. Again, that's completely personal. I'm happy with the overall changes that they made to the sculpt itself. Another like nitpicking you know, gripe of mine is that when the legs point basically directly at the one edge of a hex base, that can cause some confusion if you're new players. It, it's fine if you talk about, okay, whichever way the thing is facing or if you define the hex base. It's just one, one little thing that if you're, you know, play, playing with unpainted miniatures and, and all that or you're new, you know, the rules talk about the, the foot facing versus the torso twisting since that's a dynamic of the game. That's the only reason I bring it up. I'm not trying to say that, oh man, you put them on the hex base wrong or, or whatever. So as long as you're in a game where you can take care of that and get it clearly defined, it's not going to cause any issues. But again, uh, this is a, a solid improvement. I was, you know, not really unhappy with the Shadow Cat originally. Just the, the hip joint probably would have been the one thing that I'd either have to add like a little spacer or something. So that really takes care of the majority of it. And I think everything else is just a, a move in the right direction for improving the overall aesthetic. Next, we have the Ryokin or Stormcrow. This is the updated metal sculpt that it's standing next to, and you can see they're almost the same height. The arms are clearly modified. I, this is the only version that I had that was worth comparing, but you can see that it's not really gone up or down as far as scale is concerned. It's just kind of filled out through the legs and the arms. The arms are always kind of anemic and, you know, with skin based on the art. I've heard a few complaints about the arms and the hands being oversized, but, you know, that's again going to be based on the fact that what you've stared at with a storm crow for the last three decades has had tiny hands and that's just the way you imagine it so i like the idea of maybe being a little larger and functional but you know i can understand people's preferences and there's nothing wrong with that for the sculpt itself the arm pods i guess if you want to call them that are separate so you could take them off if you wanted to build it up or build a different uh, variant or if you want to take these off to use them for something else there's a little bit of a uh, mold line that runs along the front torso here. Some of the uh, front edge of this, this hood over these vents might be a little bit tricky to, to clean up. And then the, the fronts of the legs got... Uh, this one is maybe just a little bit, I say deformed, but maybe it just didn't settle right. The one here definitely looks more rounded and even this one's got some like lumpiness to it. I don't know if it's the same overall for every, every single produced miniature or if it's just the one that I got. You get a lot more detail added to the back. This one not as much as some of the other ones, I don't think. So it's it's lacking in that regard. And I'm a huge Stormcrow fan. It's one of my favorite mechs. But uh, you know, so I'm, of course I want you know it to be the best as possible. But I think they could have maybe had a little bit more to the to the back. But overall, I'm, I'm happy with the improvement, the broader shoulders to to bring the arms out a little bit, and then of course the the cockpit detail is is you know much much better and much improved over the two previous sculpts. I'm really happy with this. I I don't have too much to complain about. There's some some flash or some glue on the back sides here to, to clean up that's pretty easy to get to. You get some nice detail from the top side down. So it's really, like I said, an improvement over the last two sculpts. And I'm okay with the new proportions, but I'm biased because this is one of my favorite mechs. Next up is the Thor or Summoner. And this guy standing next to the latest metal sculpt update is about the same size. So, and if you have one of those other metal ones, you know it's a pretty substantial hunk of metal. That being said, the level of detail on the metal version is, is night and day different from the new plastic. The plastic definitely shines in the areas that you would want them to in the production methods to, to show all those nice little cuts and details and jump jets and things like that. You get a little bit more dynamic, wider stance, and then of course just tons of detail on the legs that you just did not get in the metal. Also, I feel that these are better proportioned overall to the torso than the, the newer version where it kind of looked like it had, you know, tall leg, short torso syndrome. Uh, that's just me again, picking on things that I wasn't super happy with about the new sculpt, but you know, the, the vents, the missile uh, exhaust ports, and then just the, the insets on the arms for just the extra detail, the, you know, ejection port for the auto cannon. Everything on this miniature was looks like it's well thought out as far as updating the overall detail and that's really what these should be. For cleanup on the miniature there's a little bit on the upper legs that'll definitely be hard to get to just based on the the confined spaces here but if you're cutting the arms off or removing them to to make a variant then hey good that'll be a good time to get to those. A little bit on these uh, knee 
knee cap or knee armor piece, pieces as well. Um, just some stuff on the underside of the weapons pods, which is fairly consistent throughout most of the sculpts, and that's that's a good thing. Um, you know, just a little bit here on the top. But as I said, the the majority of these sculpts don't have too much cleanup to do to make them look really good. Even if you miss a few areas here and there, it's not going to stand out really badly like a slip cast in a metal wood or uh, you know something that just had an extra piece of of sprue jet hanging out off of it. So again, this is a this is a nice solid improvement and it, it scales well with the metal ones so if you have the metal ones this will just fit right in it'll just be a little bit more detailed last up is the daishi or dire wolf and as you can see here compared to the updated metal sculpt the new plastic looks like the dire wolf that ate the old dire wolf it's just a massive in increase in size and uh, honestly for a hundred ton assault mech i'm okay with the new scaling and the the just improvement of the size relative to the rest of the line now of course they scaled it consistently it's 1 to 265 now overall all those things add up to allowing more detail allowing for consistency throughout the line so the the smallest mechs versus the heaviest look more appropriate when compared now of course there are slight deviations here and there but if you've played battletech for any serious amount of time you'll know that there's just been <laughs> scale consistency all throughout the ages has been not consistent just due to different artists and uh, the molding process and so on and so forth. So I'm, I'm happy to see it just be, hey, look, I'm the biggest guy on the battlefield and you're not going to mistake me for anything else. For the sculpt itself, I'm just, I really love this new direwolf sculpt. I, I've never been just a, a diehard fan of it before, but this is really convincing me that I like this miniature so much more now. The overall improvement on the, the detail, because I've, I've put several of the older metal ones together and you know, the legs were lacking in detail, the torso was lacking in detail, the arms, everything was just kind of simple. This to me looks like they've got you know armor panels and plates, just, just defined panels and recesses. You've got just so, these nice little details that really just set off the miniature overall and really make it look more convincing, and I love that. Uh, you got a little bit of flash in this groove on the back of the legs. You could probably get away with not having to do too much with that. A lot of the uh, seams are smartly placed along these edges here. It does come out a little bit more on the sides of these torsos, but the overall, the front of the cockpit here doesn't seem to have too, anything at all to, to clean up, which is great because there's a lot of detail here you wouldn't want to be scraping around. Mine has a bit of an arm cant to the one side, and that's because these, these lower arms plug into the upper arms via a post, I believe. So whoever put it on or it got, you know, it was hot and it, misshaped so there'll be some some reshaping to do another thing to note is that the auto cannon barrels inside the arms are a separate piece as in they plug in i don't know if i'll ever be able to get them out i just wanted to bring that that uh, to your attention that they are separate pieces so maybe if you take the lower arm off and then you can maybe drill from the back i i don't know i'm just throwing out that idea there because i know i'm going to be cutting some of these up and definitely some other folks will be as well i like the leg positioning uh, you know it's not running it's not you know committing you to that but I do like the the dynamic kind of cant from the lower legs it really does look like it's got some weight and heft to it and it's still kind of you know mid slow lumbering stride so again well done on the redesign I'm really happy with this sculpt and that completes the review I hope you found it helpful again these opinions are my own I purchased these on my own Tex do your thing we certainly hope you enjoyed this video please subscribe and leave your questions or comments below Follow us on Facebook at Battletech Camo Specs Online. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence, whatever.